Good morning, everybody. Coming up on this hour of San Antonio Living, we're going to share some wedding etiquette. Our etiquette expert is here to answer all of your questions. For example, who's supposed to host the wedding shower? We're going to find out. San Antonio Living starts right now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to San Antonio Living. I'm Shelly Miles. You know, it is wedding season. And although weddings are very exciting, planning and executing a wedding is very tricky. So to alleviate some quandaries and to address some very specific dilemmas, we have collected some questions from brides, from the mother of the bride and the mother of the groom and even the wedding party. Our etiquette expert, Diane Gottsman, is here with some answers. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, this can be very tricky, right? I yes. mean, it's always exciting when you find out a wedding is happening, but then we run into sticky situations with who is supposed to do what all the time. So let's start right there. These are questions from our viewers this morning. So Diane, once and for all, who is not supposed to host a bridal shower? I think that's the easier way to ask yes. it, right? So traditionally, the mom, the mother of the bride or the mother of the groom were not, and are still, I say, still should not host the shower okay. if there's someone else to do it. But is there that exception? And the answer is yes. So okay. if there is no one to host a shower and mom is the only one left to do it and has the finances, the means, go ahead and do it. But okay. a better idea would be to get somebody to do it for you and maybe help them out discreetly um, you know, under the table so it doesn't look like you're pandering for gifts. Got it. Because that's basically what it looks like. Okay. So the answer is I prefer not, but listen, if, if it means having a shower or not, do it. So it's a it. friend, an aunt, something like that. Yes, a okay. friend, an aunt, someone in the bridal party is yes. ideal. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, here's another question. I have two sisters and I don't want to choose between them on who will be the maid of honor. Is it okay to have two maids of honor? Oh, I love this question and the answer is yes. Okay. If you have two sisters or two best friends and you adore them and you know somebody's feelings are going to get hurt by all means. Okay. And you know, it's interesting this morning we just got another question about does it have to be even does the bride does the the bridesmaids have to be even with the groomsmen yeah and so the answer is not necessarily they okay. we do it for ease and so it's right. efficient going down but if you have an uneven number you can figure it out you know sometimes a pet is one of the groomsmen it's or so true yes. it is so true okay good to know good to know here's another question my daughter is getting married and I want to wear a lovely tasteful gold dress is gold too close to ivory or white <laughs> okay so I I'm going through this right now. Uh -huh. So my daughter's getting married in December and I have a lovely gold dress, so I identify did you send with in this. this. I did not, <laughs> but I identify with it. And so if in fact it is gold and not ivory looking, so take a picture. Right. Take a picture of yourself and if it looks white or ivory, the answer is no. Okay. But if it if it is truly gold, which mine is, Emily <laughs> Rose, uh, then go ahead and wear it. Okay, so gold is okay yes. if it is gold. I like yes. that. Um, all right, I've got a question about last minute invites. Some of our RSVPs have backed out and we have room for other people we didn't originally invite. <laughs> when is it considered too late to invite the B group? Oh, that's tricky. I know, it's okay. So, and the reason why is sometimes you have to limit your, your numbers. It's okay. just common sense and good financial judgment sometimes okay. but if you have all these RSVPs that backed out and you want some friends to come that you couldn't originally put on the first wrong the okay. A group I hate that A group B group go ahead and call them and say listen we have some people that are backed out I know you probably have plans but if you don't we'd love for you to be with us okay. that way it doesn't put pressure on them they don't feel like oh gosh I am a last minute you just they knew that they weren't on that list okay. because there was a reason why so go ahead and ask okay what about this one I'm throwing this one in okay. because we've okay. seen this happen so you have a couple that's long time dating right yes and one part of the couple is in a wedding and the other one isn't and not invited to the wedding how do you smooth that over <sighs> that's sticky because <laughs> if they're not invited to the wedding there's something wrong with that relationship between the bride and groom and that person. So okay. who should ask? The person in the wedding? So the person in the wedding, if they are inviting someone to be in their wedding party and they are in a committed, that's the clue, mm -hmm. the clue, committed relationship and that other person is not invited, I don't know. That's I weird. think I'd be a little bit put off if I said yes and left, and, and they said yeah. left and left you at home. Good to know. So there's lots of dynamics going on there. Good to know. All right, here's another question. When you, when do you tip the wedding vendors? Is that happening before, during, or after? So 
when they're on the dance floor, <laughs> when the wedding vendors have already, now no vendor is gonna be on the dance floor, right. but when people are on the dance floor and the reception is almost over, start tipping, start handing out the okay. envelopes. And by the way, here's the key. M write out the envelopes in advance, write down the vendor, the vendor's Smart. name, okay. and have someone you trust pass out the envelopes. Okay. But do it before the end of the reception. Okay. Some people think, well, I will send it later. No, we forget. We get busy. Okay. And by the way, speaking of after the event, you only have a few weeks to send thank you notes. Okay. You do not have a year. That Good is not know. true. Oh, no, that no, is no, an no. old tradition. Throw it out. Okay. So as soon as you get back from your honeymoon, if you go, and if not, start working on them. Two to three weeks is optimum. One month is your window. Okay. If you are at a wedding and there's an open bar uh, and a tip jar there, are you required to tip? Is that tacky? It's what? tacky. Yeah. So do not put a tip jar at your wedding. Okay. So it's up to <laughs> the host, which would be the parents or the bride and groom, whoever is hosting it, because mm -hmm. sometimes bride and grooms pay for it themselves. You pay gratuity to that bartender with the cost of the the service okay don't put a tip jar there because some people don't carry cash yes absolutely all right great information hopefully we've cleared some things up for you uh, if you still have questions you can find diane she is a national etiquette expert at the protocol school of texas right here in san antonio visit protocolschoolofTexas.com and be sure you're following her on instagram at diane gotsman